love others as you love yourself. So the question is, do you love? I mean, do you really live the definition of love? Are you patient? Are you kind? Do you celebrate in the blessings of others? Are you humble? Have you died to self? Are you slow to anger? Do you keep no record of wrongs? Do you always protect? Always trust? Always hope? Always persevere? This is what it means to love, the way God intended. So the question remains, do you love? Now, here's Bishop Kimball with today's message. Well, good morning, everyone. God is a good God. He's a gracious God. And I thank him for all things he's done. He's a great God. He's a great God. Mm. Thank you, Father, for all things. You may have your seats, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we all are aware that the world is steady crumbling at the seams. For some reason or another, God has brought us to a place in life where we are constantly challenged to make decisions, Amen. make serious decisions about our destiny, our eternity. Not next week, next month, or next year, but for eternity. There is a There's a bit of news going past our ears about war, the pandemic. What do we have look, to look forward to in this coming age? Will America go to war? Would bombs fall? on this country. Is our military strong enough to defend us? Do we have the sophisticated means of warfare? Yeah, we thought about it. We think about it. Suppose, suppose, suppose. It's not impossible. If only I knew what was on God's mind this morning. If only I knew what he was thinking. I'd feel a lot better. Uh, but the messages that we spoke about, I believe it's last year on faith, 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 God is preparing us to trust him. It's not a matter of how strong the military is, that, that doesn't matter. What kind of weaponry they have, it really doesn't matter. The nation that is blessed, the scripture says, the nation whose God is the Lord. That's, that's the blessed nation. As long as God is our Lord, and we live up to his standards and his word, we have nothing to worry about, nothing. I'm not saying that it will all be peace, but what I'm saying is it will be well with us. When the kingdom split, Solomon's son, Jeroboam and Rehoboam just couldn't seem to get it together. And after 120 years, 40 years of David, 40 years of Saul, 40 years of Solomon, 120 years, these two brothers had to, in a sense, split the kingdom. But then they didn't split the kingdom because God said, this is from me. The northern tribes went up to the north, that was called Israel, and the southern tribes went south, that was the tribe of Judah. So you had north and south now. And God allowed that split to happen for 200 years more. See, he's not in a hurry. 200 years more. 
Well, the Syrians came and took the northern kingdom into captivity. Why did the southern kingdom last longer? I'm going to tell you why. Because the kings were following God. They were following God. Let's don't get carried away with what men have or their ability to use it to destroy. That's nothing. Are you listening to me? That's, that's nothing. That's nothing. If God can <laughs> kill 185,000 men in one night, nobody heard nothing. 185,000 the next morning when people woke up, they were dead. They couldn't fight because God was the warrior that night. I read this to you a few weeks ago. I'm going to read it to you again. When the Syrian kingdom went into captivity, the scripture says the king of Assyria carried Israel away and the exile to Assyria and put them in Halah and on the Habal, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Because they were stronger? No. Why did they capture Samaria? Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God. Disobedience will weaken us. That's what weakens us, disobedience. It makes no difference about the warfare or the war equipment. Obedience to God will strengthen this nation, Amen. will strengthen this community, will strengthen anything. But my concern is not so much whether God will protect us or not. Will our leaders look to him? That's, that's, that's the big issue. Would they look to him? Will we quit relying on Republicans and Democrats? Will we quit relying on sophisticated artilleries and stealth bombers, ships and planes that can protect us? So we say. So we say. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, even all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, they would neither listen nor do it. So God, in his kindness, permitted them to be taken into captivity and not totally destroyed. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. It's amazing. So we have nothing to fear. Not, not, nothing to fear. We have... We have nothing to fear. You wake up in the morning, you thank God for the day, you thank him for protecting you, and you go on. Knowing that God has planned everything for the day. Everything for the day. When you've heard all the news, just remember God's got a voice too. Amen. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this announcement uh, about our couple's ministry the marriage ministry, maybe your marriage is fine and strong and doing well. Thank God for that. But it still needs a little something called fellowship. As long as it's been an institution, and most recently before and during the pandemic, the evil one has targeted and attacked marriages throughout the world and within the very walls of the church. That is true. To help with strengthening marriages, we invite you to join the couples ministry as we kick off the best marriage ever series on Wednesday, March 2nd. That's this Wednesday via Zoom. The best marriages ever. Hmm. I, I, okay, then. I, I thought we was doing okay, but we... <laughs> I don't know if the best one ever. Let's see if we got the best one ever. Right. <laughs> you can assess the length of this Zoom series on the Life Center Church website. That's, that's, that's Wednesday night. If you're married, you may be doing well, but check it out to see if it's the best one. If you have the best one ever, 
that's, that's real good. A amen. Um, we've been talking about church, church transformation, being transformed, individuals being transformed, and I ran across something very important this, this week, and I was just totally, totally out of whack for a day or two because I couldn't come to grips with it. And um, I want to do my best to take a few minutes to share something with you. The Church of the Transformed. What we consider the Life Center Church, as long as it's been in existence from Mount Carmel since 1957, what we consider our church transformed. Take the title, the names away. Take the denomination, the distinctives off the name. The, the question is, it is a church transformed or in the process of being transformed by Jesus? The church of the transformed. Paul started a ministry in the Galatian regions, and there were many, many churches. I don't know how many in Galatia, because he wrote a letter to the churches of Galatia. Uh, in, in, in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19, he makes a statement that's, he makes a statement that's really an attention getter. He said, my little children with whom I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you. But I wish to be, but I could wish to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. Something happened. Something happened to that church in Galatia. And Paul says, I am in labor pains. He likened himself to a woman having a child. I am in labor pains again. I went through this one time, I'm going through it again. And he says, until Christ is formed in you. What is he saying there? There should be a process started in every individual who hears God's word, and that process is Christ being fully formed in you. You begin to take on the qualities and the dispositions of Christ. He said, I'm in labor pains again. Something happened for him to say again. Something happened. And in chapter 1 of Galatians, we find out what happened in verse 6. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. A what kind of gospel? A different one of a different kind. A different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. It's just like the enemy. That's what he does. The churches in Galatia had really started off well. They received the Spirit. Paul talks about that. Have you begun in the Spirit? My, mine, you, you, you were just so soon removed. They were in the process of being transformed. Things were going well. After Paul left, a different teaching came in, something that always happens. Every so often, a new wave, a new move will come across the church world. And everybody want to grab hold to the new move. Regardless of what it is, we want to grab hold to it because 
um, like everybody else. We want to be in the forefront of things. I remember years ago, this whole, the, the, the faith move came by, the prosperity wave came by. Everybody was just claiming and confessing cars and mansions and money and everything your flesh could desire. You were claiming in the name of Jesus. I remember those days very, very well. Some of that teaching is going on right now. You say it and you can have it. You got to claim it though. You got to say it and you got to say it till it happens. Well, here it is a year later. Can I get just one testimony? Just one. I don't want all of you to rush up here. You know, just, just, just one. By now, you ought to have a mansion. By now, you ought to have all the luxury cars you want. By now, you should be wealthy. By now. But Paul asked a question that I want to ask. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? You have been bamboozled. Somebody came in with another gospel different from what I brought to you and which you experienced through the Spirit of God. And the Judaizers came in and they wanted to replace Christ with law. It's just like previously. They wanted to replace your transformation with goods. More of the world. Get more of the world. No, you need more than that. You need enough of the world so you can be damned. This is what they were really saying, but we didn't get that part. A different teaching came into the church and it stopped the transforming process. That's what happened. I'm amazed. I'm astonished. It's hard to believe the Spirit of God was using you and working in you and you laid that aside from some other teaching that means nothing. Another, different, another of a different kind. You know, in the book of Acts chapter 213, when the scriptures say others were mocking, that's others of a different kind. They were speaking insults to those people who was being used by God's spirit. So in every group you have another of a different kind. Somebody always want to distort the truth. And we have to be very aware of that because the enemy's job is to stop you from being made into the image of Christ. And Paul says, listen, listen, I am, I am in travail. I'm in labor pains again. It's like I got to start all over again because this teaching you accepted have come in and destroyed everything I told you and taught you. Now, the spirit is not working anymore. It's your flesh. It's your flesh. God sent Christ to rescue us out of this present evil age, according to the scripture. That was that present evil age. The present evil age today has gotten more worse. It's a little bit more challenging now because evil men will wax worse deceived than being deceived from the first century that Paul spoke this to the 21st century. It is that much more difficult for us to stand for God because of the conditions of this world. You, you, you really have to be serious today to be a Christian. You really have to understand the church is no more that weekly place that you come to hear. That's, that's not the church. That's, that's not the church. That used to be the place that we call the church. You go here Sunday sermon, you sing the songs, and you have the fellowship afterwards. No more people of God, no more. Please don't, please don't think like that no more. According to the Scripture, turn with me to Romans chapter 12 now. According to the Scripture, that's what I speak. According to the Scripture, in Romans 12, I'm going to be in reading from verse 3 through verse 8. Are, are you with me so far? 
Follow me here. In verse 3, Paul says, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly. He didn't say don't think highly. Everybody ought to think something of themselves. But he said more highly of himself than he ought to think. But to think so as to have sound judgment as God allotted to each man a measure of faith. Now they took this verse and ran backwards with it and had people thinking uh, every man got the measure of faith a, a measure of faith, and he's going to tell you why he gave it to you if we read just a little further. For just as we have many members in one body, all members do not have the same function. So we, verse 5, who are many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly as prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. If service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So according to the scripture, I read that, according to the scripture, we belong to one another. Amen. According to the scripture. We belong to what now? Now this is hard. This is hard because we think we members of a church, of a building. The Bible makes it perfectly clear. It's going to be hard for many to accept this because so many belong to a church and not another person. That's the catch right there. Now, listen to what he says. Verse 5, we who are many are one body in Christ, and what now? Individually members, what? One of another. My God, members one of another. As a member, it's three things I want to mention to you. God places us where he wants us. The second thing, he gives you a measure of faith. And the third thing, and a gift of function in the body of Christ. Many members in one body connected together. Many members in one body, not a building, in a body. The not all, all of us have the same function. But the problem that we face over the years is when people say, well, I'm a member of such and such a church. That's the building. You can't be a member of a building because the building is not a person. The Bible says we are members one of another. Paul used body, body, the term body. He uses it for the church throughout his writing. The body was the members connected together, individually joined together. In 1 Corinthians 12, 27, he says, now you together constitute the body of Christ. Now you together, not individually, constitute the body of Christ, not a group in a building. This is, he makes it perfectly clear. In Ephesians, he writes to the church, he says that their responsibility is to equip God's people for the work of service that builds the body of Christ, building up each other. That is the work of ministry. That is a work of teaching. That is a work of preaching where everybody comes after being out in the world all week. And I'm going to tell you what we're called in the world from the Bible. You come and gather in places like this so you can be taught the Word of God so you can understand what God is saying. This isn't the time to come and hear a good sermon. This is the time to come and get instruction. This is what it's all about. When you bring your book and you bring your Bible, because you, you're going back out there next week. And this is a very sacred time. We are members of one another. That's what makes the body. 
In Colossians 1, he says, he is the head of the body, the church, speaking of Christ. He is beginning the firstborn from the dead so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. So what he says, the church is the body of Christ. It is the gathering up of those who make up the body of Christ. They meet in a building, in a tent, whatever they have, a home, whatever it is where you meet, that doesn't mean that's the church. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing how we think? Now, Jesus prayer in John 17, you know what Jesus' prayer was? I am no more in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them in thy name, the name which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. What a challenge for us to be one. What a challenge. What a challenge that we have to face and we have to work on, that they may be what? One. One. Now, this can happen only through the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. The church can only be what God wanted to be as we allow him to transform us into the likeness of Christ. And he's not doing it individually. He's doing it as a body, as a body. When Jesus said, go into all the world, he was talking about his body. I want, just like my physical body went from Jerusalem and Samaria, his physical body was around. Now he says, I could do more because my body would be those that make up the church in the world. That's, that's, that's really what we come to learn about, how the body is supposed to function in the world the same way Jesus' body functioned in the world when he was here. Amen. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he said. The Holy Spirit is working in us, transforming us into Christ-likeness. I have, I have uh, different things I'm a part of. I have different, different things that get a benefit for for being a veteran. I have different things I'm being a part of because I'm a senior citizen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> all, 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 of those, all, of those, all of those different clubs and all them different benefits that I get for being part of that, I get benefits. But now, I want to break it down just a little bit. What do I get for being a member of Christ's body? What do I get? What's my benefit? Home Depot give me benefits. I get benefits to all these other stores. Yeah, you get 10%. What do I get for this membership? Hmm. What, what, what is the benefit for being a, what they call a member of the church? What are the benefits, people of God? What are the benefits? Well, Jesus promised us life. The benefit we get from being part of Christ's body is Christ's life. That's the benefit. If you don't get Christ's life, you're missing out on the great benefit it is. You are connected to Christ for Christ's life. We are connected to each other to make up the body of Christ to take this life into the world. This is what the church is here for. This is what... God called us together for not to be a part of a building. I mean, you, you know, how could you, a building is not a person. This is a thing. It doesn't even talk to us. It just keep the elements and the weather off of you. Provide a little cool, calm, uh, comfortable atmosphere for us to have church in, but there are no spiritual benefits in this building. Not at all. This concrete means nothing. These lights don't give you the Holy Spirit. We are a physical presence. I'm going to tell you what the church is. We are a physical presence of Christ in the world. We are a physical presence. We are Christ in the world. He lives in us. Are you listening to me? And we take him in the world, go into all the world and do what? Preach, preach the gospel to every creature. I am with you always. I'm there. So the world cannot react to what Christ wants because they don't see him. 
That's, 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 that's the part that we're going to look at. In the body of Christ, I get Christ's life. I have Christ's life, and we share it. This is what we share. I'm loved in the body of Christ. If you ever want to be forgiven, you got to get Christ's people. They'll forgive you because they know they have been forgiven. When you be around unforgiving people, you know that's not Jesus. You know that's not Jesus. When you're around people who are, are everything but kind, that you, oh, this is the wrong group. It's not, it's not Jesus. Let's see. The scripture lets us know we are the physical presence of Christ in the world. You got me? That's right. When we walk out of here today, all of us take something of Christ in the world. The physical presence. We're not church members joining in all the festivities in the world, but being Christ's presence in the world. There's certain things we don't connect with out there because we are Christ's presence in the world. Our world today suffers from what? A lack of transformed believers. Our world today is suffering from a lack of transformed believers. Transformed believers come from a transformed church, a church who understands you can do nothing for God without the transforming spirit of God working in you. We represent Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I like what Paul says to these churches. He talks about the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and, and, and verse 14, this is what it says. That's, that's 2 Corinthians. You have 1 Corinthians 12? Listen to what he says. Verse 14. For by one spirit, oh no, for the body is not one member, but many. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body. Hmm. It is for this reason, and it the less, a part of the body, it is. If the ear says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not a part of the body. It is not for this reason, any of the less, a part of the body. Yes, it is. And if the ear says, because I'm not an eye, what? I'm not a part of the body. Now, verse 17, if the whole body was just the pastor. Where will the witnesses be? If the whole were just people listening to a message, where would the witnessing be? But now God has placed the members, each of them in the body, just as he desired. Everybody in here, every soul that's a part of the body, God desired you to be in a certain place to function in a certain way. God desired it. Now, that's what we must come to reality of. There's no such thing as a member of the Life Center Church because the Life Center Church is a name and a building. It's not a person. You can't be a member of something that doesn't have life. Now, this is a very difficult thing to people to come to grips with because all of our lives, our name been on a church role, but there's another role that God got. There's another role that God got and where he placed you, he wrote your name in that book according to where he placed you and what you ought to be doing. That's, that, that's, that's what God did. And he said on that day, when the day come back, he's not going to check the church rolls. He said, I'm going to open my books, my books. 
my books. Let's quit thinking. We have to think transform people. We have to think differently. We have to think God. We have to think transformation. My mind is changing. I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. You can't snatch my arm off and my whole body clap. It's going to hurt my whole body. When one member suffers, God say we all suffer. You don't turn your back on suffering people. You come to their rescue. We are a transformed people. We don't do that no more. So is the body of Christ. We are the physical presence of God in this, uh, Jesus in this world. He ain't walking around. Now we walking around. If we are going to be the physical presence of Christ, we must allow Christ to build his own church. Christ got to build it because if Jesus built it, he's going to build it just like him. I remember when we were asked to pick out the different things for the house. I had some ideas. My wife had some ideas. And uh, we, we wanted to build that house the way we liked it. Is, is that all right? If you had the opportunity to, to build a house, what you going to build it? You going to go around asking neighbors what they like? Oh, no, you're not. You going to build it. God did exactly what only God can do. He said, I'm going to put you in Edenville. And I'm going to put you in such and such a body, and I want you to connect with that body, and I want you to strengthen that body as it strengthens you, and I want you in Eatonville to go out and represent me. Now, that's our job right here. That's our job. Go, go show the surrounding cities that there is a Jesus, and he's still alive. That, 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 that's what he wants. For some reason, this church thing bothers me because we think it's just a place we come together like this. That's, that's not right. That's unbiblical. Yeah, yeah. Listen at what the Bible teaches us here. We must allow Jesus through the Holy Spirit to transform us just like him. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be just like him. Wow. Whew. But we, we mess up. We stumble. Yeah, we do. We make mistakes. We fall down. <laughs> then God left something that's very, very important for us. It's called grace. Grace. What, what is it called? Grace. Each member is to make sure that all the other members are graced. They understand what, what, what grace is. I don't know if you, any of you had surgery or whatever, but I want to back up just a little bit. I had knee replacement. That is a painful thing. But my knee was hurting, but my whole body was weak. It was my knee. I didn't have pain in my shoulder. But all the tension was given to where that pain was. So how you feel? I don't feel good at all. It wasn't me not feeling good. It was my leg. But it affected the whole body. Now, listen, listen, listen what Christ teaches us. When one member suffer, what now? All the members suffer. We must get that compassion. Transform me, God. Transform me. So if someone asks a question, what is a church member? Don't ever tell people you're a member of a physical building or a name. You are not a part or connected. A name doesn't give you life. Jesus gives us what? Life. It comes from Christ. So I'm a member of where my life comes from. I'm connected with that, and that's Jesus. Well, why do you name the lives in a church? Because it's a legal entity. If somebody sued the life center church, uh, they can't sue the life center church. You know what they're going to have to do? They have to put a name on there. As far as that is concerned, they say, who's the pastor there? Yeah, well, that's who they come after. The identity of the church. Now, when you look at the body of Christ, 
Listen, listen. We don't, we don't see him all the way. We see his attributes. We see his love. We see his presence. So when you come after Christ, you don't come after just one. You come after the whole body. Uh, are you listening to me? You can't just take one of us. You got to take all of us. All of us. One of you don't fall. We all fall. One of you not sick. We all sick. Are you listening to me? And we have to connect like that. And I tell you, God will begin a transforming work that you've never seen in your life before. When we start realizing this is what he wants us to do, then he's going to take over for you. I'm going to say a little bit about how this happened. Jesus was nothing but a gift from God to his enemies. That's all Jesus was. For God so loved the world, he did what? He gave why we're yet sinners. Jesus was a gift to God's enemies. <laughs> when the last time you gave your enemy a gift? <laughs> when the last time you blessed your enemy with something as precious as God's, my only begotten son, I gave it for my enemies. Love, love is a demonstration. I'm going to give you a few things here while this stuff comes together. Love is a demonstration that we have been born of God and know God. That's right. Love is how people tell who we connected with. You look at a picture, you say, he look just like the mama. No, he look like his daddy. But at least there's a resemblance of where he come from. <laughs> my, my, my daughter sent me a picture. She said, I look just like my mama. I will, I guess you. Yeah, I guess you do. You look, you look like where you come from. Right, right. You act like what? Yeah. When you, <laughs> you talk like what? Yep. Yeah. You help people based on what? Where you come from. Love is a demonstration that we have been born of God and know God. That's, that's how we know. I don't have to run through the church and jump and shout. Listen to what it says. It's a demonstration that I've been born of God. How do I demonstrate I've been born of God? The way I react to people. That's the proof. And John, John 4 verse 80 says, not having God's love, you demonstrate you never experienced God and never knew God. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. You never knew God. If you can't love, you never knew God. You never knew him. You talked about him. You heard him preached. You quoted Bible verses about him, but there was no interaction, no personal inward relationship. In verse 10 of John, 1 John 4, Jesus was a gift to God. To who? His enemies. I wasn't God's friend when Jesus Amen. was accepted by me. We, we, while we were yet sinners. This showed God's love for his lost creation. God said the only way I'm going to win the creation is I have to show them love. I can't holler and scream at them and condemn them and maim them and hurt them and expect them to come to me. The scriptures say, with love and kindness have I drawn you. With what now? Love and kindness. So how are we supposed to win the world? Listen to me. I'm going to ask again. How are we supposed to win the world? By condemning them? By putting them down? By saying all things about them? You win the world just like God won you. Just like he drew you to him. With love and kindness have I drawn you. With love and kindness have I drawn you. And he wasn't afraid to go with us everywhere. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. He was right there. We are so afraid now to go into places where people need Jesus because we think somebody going to talk about our holy self. We have to get out of that. We've been transformed. Did Jesus care what people thought when he was talking to a woman in public, a Samaritan woman at that, who the whole, the, the whole town of Samaria thought she was just a, a, a wicked, 
woman was just, just so immoral, she had to go to the well in the middle of the day when the rest of the women wasn't around because she didn't feel like being criticized, ostracized. Jesus knew when they met, met the woman. She came when nobody was there because she knew all the saints in Samaria was going to talk about her. She was sneaking to the well by herself. And a man was sitting there named Jesus. That's who we are, people of God. That's who we are. We don't, we don't care. We don't mind talking to people who are on drugs and alcoholics. We don't mind talking to people who have a raggedy life. We don't mind inviting them to dinner. We don't mind. Why? Because we are a transformed people. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Not any of us have seen God in, in totality. Not any of us. By us loving one another, God is a realization in us. That's how you experience God. You know, years ago, <laughs> not too many years, this thing about the Holy Spirit was, was everywhere. You know, you want to see the Holy Spirit, just start moving your tongue and the Spirit will take over. La, 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 la. <laughs> and the Spirit, well, it sounds real foolish, and it is real foolish. And I got a call from a dear friend of mine, and their church was going through this experience, and he was asking me, would it be all right if he started um, teaching the, the members about receiving the Holy Spirit? I said, it'd be all right. I said, sure, it would be all right. He said, but I want to know, should we have the men working with the men, the women working with the women, as they begin to use their, their mouth for the Holy Spirit to take over? Now, it sounds real silly, that not it? And I'm listening use their mouth that the Holy Spirit take over. I guess you just babble until the Spirit take over. And I say, so what are you trying to do, Pastor? He say, we're trying to help people speak in tongues. I said, I just have one question. Who helped them on the day of Pentecost? Who helped them on the day of Pentecost? Who helped them? So why do we need help today? God, 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 God will give the Spirit to those who ask. Listen at the Scripture. Listen at the Scripture. Not any of us have seen God in his totality. By us loving one another, it's a realization. It's what now? It's a realization. The Holy Spirit is the witness of those born of God. If you're born of God, if you're born of God, listen, listen to me, you're going to have the Spirit of God. Now, when, when, when uh, there's a disagreement about who the father is with a baby and the mother wants to prove that this man is the father of the baby, he's got to take a test. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 did, what did they call it, the paternity test? What do they get from him? You better look out. What do they get from him? What? His blood. Now, if you say you are of Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ have cleansed you from all your sin. The blood, the blood. If they don't know who your daddy is, then you ought to check out the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. My God. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit, John. We are a transformed church. We are transformed people because of what God is doing. We don't listen to all this other doctrine about this, that, or the other, Jesus Christ and him crucified, that is enough. You don't have to help me speak the way God want me to speak. You don't have to help me in the gifting God want me to have. All God wants you to do is stay connected together and receive from one another. That's what God wants. I want to I wanna take these last few minutes and mention something about what Paul says. If go back to Romans. 
Romans chapter 12, he says this in verse 9 as he starts the second section, third section, I mean, he says in, in verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. You have me? Amen. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. We are devoted to one another. Give preference to one another in honor. Put the next person in front of you. Give preference to one another in what now? Honor. I, I, I think I deserve a position on the committee. I didn't get a position. <laughs> you need to be transformed. You need Jesus real bad. Give preference to one another in what? In honor. Paul wrote to the Colossians and says, put others before yourself. Put others. I just paraphrase that. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We don't just drag around and come around, well, I don't feel like it, well, I don't feel like it. You need to be transformed. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You serve the Lord with diligence. You serve the Lord with enthusiasm. I'm glad to serve the Lord. I'm glad. I'm glad I have the mouth. I'm glad I could do something for God. Rejoicing in hope, preserving in tribulation. Don't give up. Devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints, Practice in hospitality. Bless those who bless you. Huh? You got a different version. Bless those who bless you. See there, I got a witness over there. <laughs> bless those who what? Oh, what version y'all reading from? Bless those who do what? Can't okay, nobody do that but a transformed person. Don't, don't even try. It's probably bothering some people right now. You must be what now? I'm talking about a transformed church. I'm talking about what kind of church? Bless those who do what? Bless and do what? Not curse. Take them to dinner. Cheesecake factory open. Take them to eat. Do something. Bless them. God say, do what? Bless them. Let me read on, he says. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And what? Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. You know, not too long ago, we talked about this level thing. If people are not on your level, then bring them up to it. Go get them and bring them up to it. I just hate the even thought of people thinking they're on a level other than somebody else. My God, my God, we got to quit thinking like this. We need to think soberly, soberly, soberly. Now, listen, listen, listen to what the scriptures say. Be of the same mind. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Nobody think you're wise but you. This is the scripture. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, I like verse 18. If possible, if possible, it may not be. So far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. What is God saying there? If possible, as far as it depends on you, you do all you can do. You go the extra mile. If they don't receive it, it's not on you. You've done what God told you to do. I remember something my mama told me a long time ago. She said, when you do what God tells you to do, that's all you can do. When you do what God tells you to do, what now? That's all. You can go on about your business. Go on, go out to eat. Take your wife somewhere and y'all have a good time. You've done your job. 
you've done your job. I think that's wonderful. Never pay back evil for evil. Never pay back evil for evil. You know what happens when you get a scratch on a record, it just keeps on playing, just keep on playing. Never pay back evil for evil. Never pay back evil for evil. Never pay back evil for evil. To anyone, respect what is right in the sight of all men. Oh, man, I tell you, that is good. Uh, never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. God didn't say it was wrong. He said what? It's mine. Vengeance is mine, and what? If somebody needs to be repaid, let me pay the debt. Our job is to stay transformed. Now, these are instructions for a transformed church. These are instructions that people say, you're right, you're right, it's right. We are being transformed into the likeness of Christ. If your enemy is hungry, wow, that's in caps, isn't it? But this is serious here. I didn't, I see. If your enemy is hungry, if he is thirsty, for in so doing, you will heap what? Burning coals on his head. Now, that's not literally coals off a, off a cooker. I want to I wanna just put it this way. You do something to him. You do something to him. Do not be overcome by evil. How do you overcome evil? With good. Now, I have a whole other section here about love I'm not going to get into because I don't have time. But what I was mentioning here today is the transform church. Think and act like this. The transform church. The transform church are members of each other. Not a building, but each other. And right there what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, and he makes it perfectly clear. We, so we who are many are one body in Christ, individually members one of another. And we make up a body, and that body is Christ. And this is what we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to go back into the world. And we're going to show the world that this book is right. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are what kind of church? Amen. Yeah, the church of the, the church of the transformed. That's a good name. That's a good name. The church of what now? Transform. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing and have done. And we want to bless God for how he has brought us to this point. And we're not going to let some teaching come in and separate us like the Galatians did. We're going to stick with what God says. We are the people of God. We part of one another. We part of one another. Let God be glorified. I want you to stand with me now. Father, I thank you for every person that you have crossed, allowed, I mean, across the path and across my path. Some worked, some didn't work. Some were good, some were not so good. But through it all, you placed me where you wanted me. You gave me the gift you wanted me to have. And I thank you for it even right now. I bless you for every gift you have given to every individual in here. You have done it according to your word. And I pray to God that they come to realize that they are to function in the body. They are part of the body of Christ in the world. We are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. I bless you and I thank you for every last person you have put under the teachings of this ministry. May they grow. May they develop. May they more and more and more like Christ until the day you come back. We thank you for the opportunity. I bless you and I thank you even right now. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat.